Hi everyone, um, it's Ina, beating around the books. I am here to do my slightly belated June reading wrap up. Um, June is was a very odd month for me. Um, there was a lot going on that kind of took some of my concentration away from reading. Um, and so, yeah, weird mix of stuff. Um, not as many books as like the previous months. I don't know exactly, actually. I think it's less than last time anyway. Um, and I'm slightly tired at the moment, or I have been for the whole month. So if I'm looking away all the time, it's because I'm looking at my um, Instagram wrap up to sort of <laughs> uh, jog the mind a bit. Um, yeah. So, I read six books, um, some of these were audio, others were, um, or oh, where have I, oh, I've left it over there, sorry, I'm just going to cut for a second. Ah, there it is. La, la, la. <sighs> Excuse me. So, six books. Um, so, the first one I read was... How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell, which was a very, very weird mix. Um, so the, um, how do you say that? Is it the subline or subheading of it is Resisting the Attention Economy. And um, it's not quite what I expected it to be, but I'm still glad I read it, if I could, yeah. Um, so it's it's this weird mix, right? There's a lot of sort of um, criticism of capitalism and sort of hustle culture and obviously the way our attention is being drawn and also monetized by social media and so on, you know, that sort of thing. But she isn't um, like a complete opponent of social media either. Um, but she talks about how, you know, how how after, you know, after we are already, you know, most of us working, you know, like basically, how do you say this, trading money, uh, trading time for money, um, and how now we are also, you know, the product in this sort of social media environment, and how, um, you know, one should be, you know, maybe a bit more uh, careful with how you spend your time, and uh, not doing anything doesn't actually mean, you know, not doing anything, but she literally sort of, you know, makes a case for stopping to smell the roses and that sort of thing. But also she talks about, um, you know, a lot of uh, appreciation for art, which sometimes went over my head because she went to quite some length uh, describing certain performance art and, 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 and pictures and stuff. And um, sometimes I wondered where she's going with this. Um, and then she makes a case as well. She's also about nature, you know, like the connection to nature and to place, to place, you know, just like the surrounding areas of which you live in. Um, not only the nature, but also the sort of small communities that are around us. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite a meandering book, I would say. Um, yeah, and every so often it lost me, but it, it was it was all right. It was good. Um, four stars, but it was more like you know a three and a half rounded up, I think. Okay, then the next one um, I read was Fugitive Telemetry, well, Fugitive Telemetry by Martha Wells, and um, that is I think the sixth installment in that series which is called Murderbot Diaries. Um, so it's this, so the protagonist calls itself Murderbot and or calls themselves Murderbot and they're like a robot human construct that is sentient and um, is normally used as a sort of, I guess, deadly security guard and um, but he's or no they have I don't know I think he's not really a uh, gendered um, they've like hacked their governor module and so basically don't actually have to follow any um, 
orders um, and well this is the sixth installment so obviously we're not going to talk about what's happening in there um, I think it's, it's also a novella there's only one novel um, which was the last one they're all quite short um, they're quite action heavy which isn't usually like my jam but I do like this series specifically as a sort of nice escapism um, I like the character of the murder bot quite a lot probably because kind of a misanthrope and um, yeah and, and sometimes it does touch on sort of a bit more interesting areas of um, whole question between like okay AI and, and, and sort of the ethics surrounding that and what anyway but it, it, it's quite light touch um, so you know it, it's not I wouldn't read it for that specifically anyway um, I think I gave it four stars yeah then I read two, the first two in a series um, of, I can't remember what it's called, I think the th series is called The Athena Club or something, so the first one of that is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, um, and the second one is called European Travels for the Monstrous Gentlewoman. Um, so this is this sort of um, pastiche of um, classic gothic, horror detective story sort of things um but it centers around female descendants or creations of these sort of uh, famous characters that we know from you know the sort of i guess victorian and pre-victorian time um so we have you know like the daughter of dr jekyll and we have um what do we have we have like a female frankenstein sort of situation and I don't know all, all that sort of thing okay um, and they are trying to solve a series of murders and also are delving into the sort of mysterious background of their own lives uh, because you know they're kind of in the dark about a lot of that and find out over time um, yeah so there's a few things I liked about it, um, which is, I guess I liked the concept in itself. It kind of sounded, you know, like a quirky, fun kind of romp, um, you know, with women at the center of it. Um, I liked the sort of, this is my cat again. What are you trying to do? You're always derailing me. You want, want to play with that? Come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you could at least come on camera and be cute, that would be good. I like, I would like that. No? Okay, I'm not interested. You can play with this if you want. Okay. So, where were we? What I like? Oh, I like the found family sort of trope. That's kind of a, a nice trope. I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan of that one. Um, and one thing that I found really sort of um, fun in the beginning was that it uses the sort of meta uh, narrative um, element um, because basically the book is ostensibly written by one of the characters of the book herself um, and she, in the writing of it, uh, continually drops in comments about the writing process and also about um, certain oh, conversations she has with other characters who aren't happy about their portrayal in the book um, and sort of you know they argue back and forth about whether she should start with this scene or that scene and blah 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 so that was kind of fun in the beginning uh, it gets a bit tiresome after a while because um, she's not really doing anything new at that point and it just keeps interrupting the the narrative so to me yeah you know it, it, yeah it was fun for a lot a little while and then it just lost its appeal um yeah so that was still sort of I guess enjoyable enough because clearly I picked up the next one this is an audiobook by the way um they were both on script um, and then I picked up the next one and there we follow straight on, you know, from the from the 
end of the last narrative we're going we're starting off in the next one and we just get a bunch more um, characters thrown in i think there's something about uh, dracula and something about van helsing and all that sort of thing anyway um the narrative splits uh, into like two groups um is it two or is it even three it might be three groups to be honest um by now, I was super annoyed with the meta narrative part. It's just tedious and it wasn't adding anything. Um, and this had so many like super, super convenient coincidences and this sort of, you know, these sort of rescue attempts that came like sort of Dias Ex Machina type of thing. It was just a bit... Yeah, it was not my thing. It, I was not happy with it. And my goodness, was that long. It was like, I think, almost twice as long as the first one. It took 24 hours on audiobook if you don't speed it up. Nobody needs 24 hours of this. I don't know what the editor was doing. Well, I don't, I don't think they were doing their job because it's not, you know, it's not like chock full of action for this whatever, however many pages that is. I think it's like 700 pages or something. It's... There's so much, what's the word, filler in here that you don't need, including those stupid meta-narrative things. Um, and in that, in those elements, you've just got this sort of thing where all the characters seem to be like caricatures of themselves. It doesn't, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Basically, I don't understand why I even finished it. I think it was just because I was doing household chores. So, you know, you're just doing stuff. So you just keep on listening to this thing because it doesn't annoy you enough to go and dry your hands and turn it off and find something different. Um, yeah, so I need this to say I won't be continuing with that. But yeah, sad to say because I've, I've heard a lot of people really loved it. But it was not me, not me. I don't know, maybe I'm just going off that sort of genre. No, but really it was just too long. Okay, then the next one was an absolute highlight. It was um, A Still Life by Josie George. I think I mentioned it in my mid-year freakout tag. Yes, I did. Um, so this is a memoir um, by Josie George, who is a writer and a, an artist living with the sort of um, disabling chronic illness since her childhood. And um, this was a recommendation by Hannah from Let's Talk About Books Baby, um, who seems to be, I don't know, only recommending good memoirs recently, at least for my taste. Um, so thanks for that. Um, it's, so she basically chronicles her experiences growing up, but also sort of in the present um, as she's writing the book. Um, and about, she, you know, she talks about how she's trying to sort of carve out this, you know, good life or a version of a good life for herself um, within the limits that this uh, illness puts on her. Um, and, you know, also the sort of unpredictability of her illness. Um, and it's really, really beautifully written. It's like very poetic, um, but of course it's also quite dark, um, quite painful, um, and at the same time sort of incredibly uh, life-affirming. Um, yeah, I, I really loved it. It was, it was, it was really good. Um, it took me the whole month to listen to because, yeah, I just needed to take breaks in between. It was not one to sort of gulp down because yeah, sometimes I felt like I had to just sit with some of the insights or, yeah, I don't know. It was very good. If you're into that sort of thing, um, I can highly recommend it. Um, and then the last one I read was um, like the most amazing body read ever, um, which was uh, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, this was Buddy Read with Brian from Bookish, uh, Mark Nash and Rose from Scully Dandling about the books. And there was so much discussion. It took like 
most of our Sunday afternoons or something like that. It, sometimes we would be there, you know, chatting back and forth for, I think, what did Mark say? Four or five hours or something like that. <laughs> so it definitely gave a lot of uh, food for thought. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I think we all appreciated the book for different reasons, even though I think, I don't know, um, I don't think anybody like loved, loved it, but it was incredibly thought provoking and enlightening uh, with regards to a lot of facets of the trans experience that none of us had ever like considered because we we're all cis and I guess not not necessarily so much in contact with trans people or even if you are like I know if you would you know but you're not gonna go and probe and ask about all sorts of I don't know intimate details um you know you know what I mean uh oh maybe we'll just quickly okay so we have um Reese Ames and Katrina Reese is a trans woman um who has who used to uh, be together with Ames but Ames is a guy who has detransitioned so he had been a trans woman and that's when well she was with Reese as Amy and then she detransitioned took the name Ames and uh, he is now in an affair with Katrina who is his boss and he impregnates her accidentally because he had thought that he was infertile from all the from the hormone treatment and um so now there's this issue between like katrina possibly you know getting an abortion or wanting to keep the baby but then have ames in the picture because she needs somebody reliable blah 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 um and ames can't really see himself as a father um that's what he struggles with that image um with regards to his identity and so he gets this weird idea or this sort of out there idea of um suggesting to get Reese back into the picture not well you know to basically then have a sort of free co-parenting situation um going on uh, because Reese like this is one of her biggest wishes is to be a mother uh, which is obviously not something that she can achieve uh biologically uh, like you know by how do you say it? By giving birth herself. Um, and yeah, so far, so good. So that's kind of the plot. And then things develop from there. Um, but it isn't really necessarily that much about this plot. It's more, well, I don't know. It's more, I think it's more of a character study of recent aims because there's so many... Um, flashbacks to um, different experiences in their past um, at different times that have shaped you know them as a person I'm sorry it's really humid here it's not even very hot but it's very very humid okay um flashbacks to what to um, previous Things that happened. Um, okay, so what was, I, what was I trying to say? Okay, so Tori Peters does not mince words. She does not shy away from, you know, the from describing dark moments, ugly, violent uh, moments, and so on, um, which I think was good in this context. Um, and sometimes I thought her writing was very beautiful but not all the time. And sometimes I was also relatively annoyed with some of the extended metaphors that I thought were just shoehorned in there. So trying to, you know, be balanced here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, some of it was not necessarily uh, all to my liking, but she did introduce so many really, really, um, interesting interesting thoughts um and concepts i guess 
that I still really loved reading it for that, for, for, for specifically this. So there was um, one thing where she talks about, um, I can't remember what it's called, but queer temporality, possibly. Um, you know, where basically, because she's got, um, so Reese, this is when Reese, uh, when Reese is uh, a narrative, part of the narrative in that moment. Um, so she's talking about how she feels like um, she has kind of fallen behind in terms of achievements and sort of, how do you say this, like, you have these sort of marks along the way, right? You think like, okay, after you finish school, this happens, this happens, then you get married, then you do this, blah, blah, blah. And she feels like she's fallen behind. Um, and um, then she gets given this book about this topic, about queer temporality and how a lot of queer people, um, sh you know, would have to sort of do all that a bit later because sometimes it would take so long to just even, I don't know, how do you say this, like get to terms with their identity and blah, blah, blah. And um, then if you're a trans person, you even, uh, well, unless you already realized that before your puberty and got the support you needed, you would have to go through puberty twice and all that. So therefore um, the way that, uh, people look at what you should have achieved by which an age doesn't really work if you are in that position. Um, so that was really interesting. And then um, Ames was incredibly interesting about when it when it came to, uh, you know, speaking about his sexuality and his like early sexual experiences as a teenager um, where he had to kind of do all sorts of mental gymnastics to try and imagine himself as the woman or the girl that he was having sex with to try and like take any pleasure from what he was doing. Um, it sounded incredibly, you know, difficult. And then he made that sort of comment about how that um, also meant that he was basically completely detached from the actual act and from the partner um that was like i don't know it was quite difficult to read but yeah it was just a really interesting um interesting um perspective i'm not sure i'm doing this any justice in terms of characters i thought they were incredibly interesting um i, I just wasn't quite sure about katrina i couldn't quite I mean, we don't follow her that closely. It's really centering around the two um, trans or, well, the detransition person and not necessarily about the cis person who's, you know, sometimes there to make stupid mistakes. Not 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 only for that, but um, it's... Yeah, she, I, I don't know. She, I couldn't quite follow her motivations. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah. That's fine, I guess. She was, you know, she was centering the um, two other characters and not the cis woman. Um, what else is there? There's some pop culture references that some people uh, hated and others did not mind. I did not mind them so much. Um, might have to do with the fact that I actually recognize most of them because I think I'm of that age where I would have watched that sort of thing, you know, like Sex and the City and, and Friends and stuff like that. Um, but I also wasn't necessarily a fan of it. Um, and yeah, and there was one particular scene where I thought, mm, I feel like this cheapens it now a bit, but I'm not going to say any more than that. So anyway, um, I definitely appreciate it for... I guess what it has taught me, I know that sounds terrible, and especially considering that Tori Peters says she is writing with a trans audience in mind. Um, but I mean, I couldn't help but learn new things reading it. Um, and for that, I think it's incredibly valuable. Um, and like I said, I think some of the writing was really good. It's just not all of it. Um, so I wouldn't say it was like, a literary masterpiece, if you know what I mean. Um, which is also why 
I personally don't think there's anything wrong with it not making the shortlist of the Women's Prize, although I'm not saying that um, it doesn't belong there because I don't actually know most of the books that are on the shortlist. I'm just saying I think it's, in terms of writing, it's not, didn't knock myself, knock myself socks off. Did you say that? I don't know. Do you say that? I can't remember. It didn't impress me that much. But it was a good book. I love the body read. Um, it was super illuminating. And to me, that was a four star read. And I think it definitely, it's definitely one to recommend if you are interested in reading from that perspective, which why shouldn't you? right? Um, okay, so that's the end of my June reading. Sorry this took so long. Oh my god, 26 minutes for six books. Okay, sorry. Anyway, um, let's hope I can cut some down. And, you know, last but not least, trans women are women. Let's remember that. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Let me know if you think about picking this up or any of the other ones I've mentioned and um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.